Hello, hello, welcome back to our channel. I'm Ruth. And I'm Thomas. And this week we wanted to change it up a little bit, so we're doing something a little different from the norm. So last month we did something called 30 Days of Kindness, which we came up with because we felt like with all that's going on in the world right now, it's been a hard time for people. And we wanted to find a way to spread some joy while we're social distancing. So every day we came up with a new act of kindness to bless someone in our community. So today we're gonna share with you 10 of those ideas so that you can replicate them at home. All from a safe, socially safe distance. Socially safe distance. Let's get right into it. So, if your grandparents are anything like ours, they love snail mail and they want to hear how their grandkids are doing. Especially during this time of isolation, many are bored or lonely and they want to hear from you. So we decided to write letters to our grandparents. Grab your favorite pen, grab some stationery, and write them a heartfelt note. And make sure you get past like the hellos. Try to write them like a real note. Yeah. Ask them how they're really doing. Let them know how you're really doing. Tell them some stories. Just make it as personal as you can. And if you want some bonus points, you can order photos from Walgreens or Snapfish and send your grandparents photos of highlights from your year, trips you've been on, things you've done. If your grandparents aren't very tech savvy, it's a great way to show them what's been going on. One of our friends took this idea and she just ran with it. She got all of her photos compiled and then she created a slideshow, made a voiceover for them, and then uploaded it to YouTube and shared the link with her grandma. She was yeah. a superstar. She gets lots of brownie points for that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that time of the year. It's that time of the year. When the grass is growing like a teenager in 10th grade. She made that one up. <laughs> I came up with that. <laughs> A lot of people actually do not enjoy the chore of mowing. Although I do. It's mm -hmm. always peaceful and relaxing. You get to be outside, get to tan on. So if you have a lawn mower, we would encourage you to find a neighbor or a friend and mow their lawn for them. It can be anyone, but if you don't know them well, definitely warn them. Warn them that beforehand. You're coming. Yeah, you don't want them to be surprised by you mowing their lawn for them. I feel like that could be seen as kind of like a passive aggressive. <laughs> we felt like your lawn was too long, so we're gonna yeah. come mow it for you. Okay, so this idea is to pay for the person behind you in the drive through line. And we tried this at McDonald's. It ended up being kind of a fiasco. First of all, we tried to set up a camera outside to like capture us driving up and pulling off, but it freaked out the manager because I think they thought we were like a health inspector or something, <laughs> trying to like bust them. Right. And then when we asked the cashier if we could pay for the person behind us, she didn't really seem to know how to do that. So it ended up taking a long time and we had to use cash instead of a credit card. So we couldn't process credit cards. Cards. So if you end up doing this yourself, just make sure you bring some cash. I think some places are different than others. A lot of right. places are used to it. I bet Starbucks would be used to it. You just might have a different experience every time you do it. But it is a good way still to bless someone and make their day. During isolation, it's really easy to feel alone. But the nice thing is, is that no matter where you live, you still have your neighbors. Unless of course you live on the moon. Or in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> then you don't have any neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> we think that a really easy way to build community is to get to know your neighbors. In the house we lived in before this, we had a lady who lived down the road who had been there for 30 years. And the people next to her had lived there for like 20 years. Yeah, 20 something. And they didn't know each other. They'd never met. They didn't even know each other's names. That's crazy. You can change that really easily by just introducing yourself to your neighbors. When we did this, we left a note and we taped it on their door, on their mailbox, and we included our phone numbers and contact information just in case they ever needed anything, they could reach out to us. And we heard back from them. We received two gifts, a text message mm -hmm. and a Facebook message. Somebody sent us a handmade quilt. It was absolutely it was beautiful. beautiful. Those little things already make us feel so much more connected and we mm -hmm. haven't even met them in person. While you're out there being kind to your neighbors, make sure you're also kind to the earth. 
There's an absurd amount of trash everywhere and we live on this really busy street and trash just accumulates. So we decided to go out and pick up trash with two of our friends, six feet apart, of course. So all you'll need for this one is a couple trash bags, some gloves to keep all the gross stuff off your fingers and some clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. And you never really know what you're gonna find out there, so be prepared for anything. We found yeah. broken car parts, vodka for dog people. <laughs> and a lot of gross used Clorox wipes. Hashtag COVID. We started out with two trash bags, but then we ended up finding a bunch of bags out there and filled those as well. So in the end, we had 13 full bags of trash. We may be stuck at home, but thank goodness we can still order from Amazon. We actually just bought a drone last week. Oops. One way you can bless people though is to get them gifts from said Amazon. I've seen a lot of groups on Facebook recently where people post their wish list so that you can see them and then buy them something directly from that. And if you're not part of one of those wish list groups, you can always just get them something that you think they would like. If you get on Amazon, there's a tab that says find a gift, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you can select by like gender and age and then filter it even by price and they have all kinds of stuff on there. It's a great way to just say, hey, I'm thinking about you, you mean a lot to me. And hopefully make their day. So small businesses have been hit really hard, especially in this time. A lot of them have had to close down. One easy free way that you can support your favorite small local businesses is by leaving them reviews on their Facebook pages, yes. Yelp, Google, what have you. So pick your top five small local businesses and get online and show them some love. Show them some love. Many frontline services are really struggling right now due to higher demand, fewer available volunteers, and a lot of them have had to cancel critical fundraising events. A lot of them have websites or Facebook pages, so reach out to them and find out how you specifically can help. We actually have a friend in Springfield who works for a local food pantry, and he let us know that they needed funds just to buy enough food to keep yeah. up with the everyday demand. So a group of us pooled our money together and were able to raise over $500, and it's just really a testament to how much more you can do in a group as opposed to acting individually. So we challenge your group of friends to go out there, find a cause that you're passionate about, and support it either financially or with your volunteer time. Sometimes it's fun to just be kind to absolute strangers. You never know who's going through a rough time and could really benefit from just a little bit of joy. So we decided for this one to write encouragement notes to absolute strangers, head over to the grocery store and stick them under the windshield wipers on people's cars. So for Ruth and I, we decided to pray over each and every one of them that the people who received them would feel encouraged and loved and just feel peace in this otherwise pretty trying time. All right. Has it ever been someone's birthday and you have absolutely no idea what to get for them? Well, we have the perfect solution for you. So basically what you're gonna do is send out a survey to all of your friends asking them about their favorites, favorite snacks, favorite activities, favorite music, etc. And then you'll compile that information into a handy dandy spreadsheet that you can use in the future. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that now. Step one, you're gonna go ahead and get on your Google Drive, click New, go to More, then Google Forms, and that will open up a brand new form. Add a title, and then go ahead and add your questions. Make sure you ask their name, and then other questions like, what's your favorite snack? What's your favorite activity? Or anything else you would like to add. When you're happy with it, click the Send button where you can find a shareable link to send to your friends. Once they fill out your survey, you'll find all the responses in the Responses tab. From here, you can create a new spreadsheet with all the answers to share with your friend group. Now, in the future, when it's somebody's birthday, you'll know exactly how to get a gift that's meaningful and something they'll love. So that is part one of our Acts of Kindness series. We hope that you'll have fun trying these at home and spreading positivity and gratitude. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And make sure that you subscribe, subscribe to our to channel, channel so you don't miss part two coming very soon. To a theater near you. <laughs> right. Over the past month, we have found that kindness really is contagious. And by doing these, you will receive more than you give. We also want to know what your ideas are for acts of kindness. So yeah. comment below so that we can give them a try. Thank you again for watching and we hope to see you next week. 
Welcome to our channel. I'm Ruth. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got a stashy going on. And you can see it in the camera from this distance. That's how you know. Ow! Our cactus just tipped over on us. You have such good protection instincts, though. He, like, <laughs> dove in front of the cactus <laughs> to save me from So it. then I got a bunch of thorns in my face and arm. It's like one of those near-death experiences. Like, <laughs> you, I mean, like, you don't know how you're gonna react until it happens. It started lactating. Yeah, you can see it's, like, dripping down. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. You do your hand movements. No, I know. This is how he talks. <laughs> Should this be our thumbnail? Yeah. And then I'll just be in the back looking the nose. Yeah. The concept. That's clama. Share it with you. All We've right. got this cat that walks around our neighborhood and it looks like a miniature puma. And the other day we saw it in our front lawn and we were like peering at it through our window and it looked right at Ruth. And, and it, it had like this right really weird pose. And it kind of like squatted in its pose. And then it just <laughs> dropped the biggest dookie I'd ever seen a cat yeah. lay. And Seriously? then ran away. It that was, was it. Huge. Bye. Okay. <laughs>